Okay, welcome. This is a classic problem that causes difficulty with many students in physics when we're looking uh, at the motion of objects, not just in the lens of kinematics, but in the lens of energy. So, I have a, a problem, and this is a problem that you will see again. It's illustrated up here at the top. A ball of mass m, uh, here we are, this is our ball of mass m, falls from some height in three different ways. Scenarios A, B, and C illustrated below. Rank the final velocity from least to greatest of the ball at the bottom of its path. In other words, if the ball just falls vertically off this height, all the way down to the ground, how fast is it going right at the bottom? What's its final velocity? What's its final velocity if it falls down this ramp that's pretty steep? What's its final velocity if it falls down this very long ramp that's not as steep? Now you can always assume that when it falls, the initial velocity is zero. So it has an initial velocity of zero in every case, how would you determine the final velocity? Well, we've determined on the rate at which it accelerates down. Now, for purposes of all the problems we're going to solve, we're going to ignore the frictional forces. So when the ball is falling down the ramp or falling in free fall, there's no resistance to the ball. If it's falling vertically due to free fall, the acceleration is due to gravity. 9.8 meters per second squared. As it's rolling down the ramps, friction is negligible. So it's just a straight kinematic problem or a conservation of energy problem. Now, think about this problem. Think about different ways you could solve it. Think about how the final velocity might differ at different, if the ball takes different paths to get to the bottom. But in every case, it's always falling safe from the same vertical height. It's just a much shorter distance it travels if it falls in free fall. A little bit longer down the steep ramp and the longest distance it travels in scenario C as it goes down this ramp. Now, I contend that in all three cases, the ball will have the same final velocity. It doesn't matter how it gets to the bottom. All that matters is the height, the vertical height, that the ball traveled as it fell. And if they all, in all three cases, fall from the same height, the ball should have the same velocity. And to prove it, we can think about this problem using the conservation law of energy. That is to say, how much total energy the ball has at the top of its path will be the same as at the bottom of its path. So the total mechanical energy at the ball at the top will be the same at every position along its path. If you remember, mechanical energy is the combination of the ball's potential plus, plus its kinetic. And if you look at just the top of the path versus the ball's potential energy plus its kinetic at the bottom of the path, we can solve this problem. Now, one key idea to understand is at the top of the path, the velocity is zero. So at the top, the kinetic energy is also zero. Kinetic energy at the top of the path is zero because if it has zero velocity, when you plug in zero into this kinetic energy equation, zero times anything is zero. So at zero velocity, ball always has zero kinetic energy at the top of its path. Another thing that helps us resolve this is the potential energy at the bottom of the path for all three scenarios will be zero as well because potential energy is defined as its mass times the g value constant times its height, its height. And at the bottom of the path, it has fallen its height down to height zero. Zero times anything is zero, so that means zero potential energy at the bottom and zero kinetic energy at the top. Now, if we assume those in this equation, We've got the potential energy at the top is equal to the kinetic energy of the ball at the bottom. And if you substitute this for mass times g times h at the starting height at the top for its potential, and then at the bottom that would be equal to one half of its mass times its final velocity. So one half mg squared at the bottom, that's the final velocity, so it's a good question. Now if you solve this equation, something interesting happens. Quickly realize you have an m on each side of the equation. If you divide by mass, mass cancels out. Therefore, the velocity does not depend on its mass. And if you can go back and think about where that was relevant in free falls, you might remember it. Regardless of the mass, if you drop different masses from some height, they should all fall at the same rate. Acceleration does not depend on its mass. You see that proved here. Now, if you solve for the final velocity, Final velocity squared is now equal to 2 g h. So I half that by 
I simply multiply both sides of this equation by 2. 2 times a half gets to the half power on the right side, and therefore final velocity is greater than 2 gh. Take the square root of both sides, and you find out that the final velocity is simply the square root of 2 times the gravitation constant g times its height. So in all three cases, the height is the same, therefore the final velocity same, so the only variable the velocity depends on is the height.